Hello, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be presenting an interesting and different way of creating an ESP. Instead of using the view matrix to correctly scale up and down boxes and lines so that they can be correctly projected on your screen, I'll be simply using player position and angles. Now let's actually run this program so that you can get an understanding of how it works and what it is. Now the ESP is a little bit uh, offset as the lines need to start from the center of the screen. I'll talk exactly why this happens, but in a nutshell, the reason why when I started the program, it's like this is because it was set to work on 1080p, um, which is not what I'm on right now. I'm on a lower resolution. But yeah, anyways, this is the program. This is the ESP. As you can see, the lines do disappear quite rapidly. But this, this is intended as the longer the angle difference between you and the player, the more, I believe, distortion takes place as it's a 3D world. So, um, yeah, yeah, and without the view matrix, then the lines would be displaced, as you can see over here from the player. Even though it's limited to a set amount of angle, it's this kind of error still happens. But all you need to do is just look closely to uh, around uh, the entity and you are going to get a better understanding of where exactly they are. In this program, I used SFML to display this all this information, which was much more easier than using GDI in the last video when I made the DSP. I remember when I made that video with the GDI, it was a pain in the ass to understand because I had basically no experience in Windows API and it was really fucking annoying. But now I found SFML and I tried it and it's a pretty high level library for working with graphics, which is really cool. It allowed me to create a window and do all that in really little time. Now let's get a let's get into the program and discuss this code. Now this program doesn't really require too many offsets. You don't need a view matrix as previously mentioned. All you need to do uh, is well, all you need all you need are the offsets for the player's head and your head. Um, the team you you need to know what team you are on. I mean it's not really required, but I like it more that way. You need to know the you're on the pitch of uh, of yourself and. Of course, the entity list, the local player, and the health. You can filter out um, the entities. Now, in the main function, I have these two variables that correspond to the resolution that you have in the game. I calculate the center of the window of the game so that I can get an understanding where my crosser is. But later on, you will see that I offset I can offset where the crosser, where the program perceives that the crosser is, because I can move it around like this. And this is the offset, by the way. So as you can see, it's set to already something. And the reason why it's like that is because I set it so that it works on 1080p. I don't know if on your computer it's going to be perfect, like it's on mine for 1080p. Now, this is where we're starting to get into the juice of the program. Because here we are con we are getting a coefficient that will help us to convert view angles, a specific amount of angles, into pixels so that we can actually draw it on our screen. And I made a little diagram in the past showing this. The reason, so how I actually found um, about this is that I simply got a point of reference, in this case an enemy, and uh, I moved exactly 10 degrees using Cheat Engine. Um, in a particular direction, in this case I use on the yaw, but it's the same thing when on the pitch. And then I calculated the distance between this and this using GIMP, and it was 90 pixels, meaning that for each 9 pixel of displacement on your screen, you're going to have one angle difference. Now, the longer the angle is, the more distortion there will be, so this will not be too accurate, I think, as there is some rotation you need to calculate and take care of which we won't do because that is basically using the view matrix and uh, I don't want to do that now. Now, 90 pixels for 10 angles, now it's, it was on this, 
um, resolution 1360 by 768, but that is not an issue as we can convert um, the coefficient 9 for, for one angle by dividing a cur the current resolution with 1360, which will get us a, a factor, which one multiplied by, in this case, 90, then we're going to get on how many pixels you would have for 10 degrees on 1080p resolution. Hopefully you understood that explanation. I spoke quite fast because I don't want to stay too long on uh, this. And it's quite easy to understand if you take a look at it, at it yourself. Okay, next. Here we create a window. It's really, really easy to create a window, unlike uh, using a Windows API. All right. Set the position of this window on creation to zero, 00, so this corner over here. Now get the handle of my window using this method provided by SFML. And here I make my window transparent and remove its decoration so that it can work as an overlay. I also make it pass through so that when I can press, even though it's on the window, the window gets ignored and still gets, uh, still stays on top and I can work around. So let me show you, look, I can still do stuff within the window. Now, ironically enough, it was easier to use SFML to create a window, handle the events, and draw the lines, and work with graphics, and all that, than actually just removing the decorations by using Windows API. Now, Windows API is really, really powerful and really cool, but it is quite and I guess low level in some way because it does give you a lot of control and that is really good. But when you want to do something fast, it's not really optimal, I guess. Here we get in the main loop, which stays open as long as the window is open. And we have these checks, which I personally don't really like how they look like. It's pretty stupid. It's if, else, if, else, if, blah, blah, blah. But this allows us to offset our uh, center of the screen crosshair where the program thinks the crosshair is, to something that we desire. Why would we do this? It's because maybe, I guess, the program sometimes, when on start, isn't set correctly. So that then you would need to manually um, like align it yourself. Really get a way to fix this, just because I don't want to put the window exactly on where my game is. Yeah, here I handle, this is this is how you handle the events in uh, SFML. It is really straightforward. You get a current event, and then you use the template function to check if it's a certain event. And then uh, in this case, I only handled if the window is closed. Here we clear the window with a certain color after each frame. Now let's take a look of what would happen if we wouldn't do this. As you can see, you have the ESP, but look what happens when I move it. See? The previous data is still shown on your window, even though it was before. So in order to get past that, you simply clear it with a transparent zero, zero color. Yep, I get my local player and local team, and now I loop through the entity list. I already talked about the entity list in a previous video. As in CS2, now the, pref uh, the preferred entity list in the CS2 is a certain list of player pawn controllers. Before in Counter-Strike and CSGO, we, people were using an entity uh, list more often that was full of just player pawns. In CS2, this entity list, as discussed in a previous video, in a previous video, it's quite fucked, as instead of each player pointer L entity being separated 10 hexadecimal units uniformly, it's quite random, and you don't know exactly where it is. Now, this didn't stop me, as I, used, I still used the old entity list, and in order to correctly loop through each entity, instead of 10 hexadecimal units, I go with 8 hexadecimal units so that I can go to each individual pointer on that list and then check if their health is in a certain threshold and if the team of the entity is, is, is in this case, which allows me to utilize this said outdated entity list and somehow bring it back to life. I found this way more straightforward, so I just stuck with it, I guess.
I get the x and y uh, and z coordinate of my entity, same with myself. I calculate the distance between me and the player on every single plane, the x and y and z. Get the yaw and the pitch that I would need to have so my crosser would be perfectly on the player's head, which is precisely what we do in an aimbot, and then get my local yaw and pitch. So that I, then I can calculate the distance between the yaw and pitch I would need to have to be on the player's head and what my current yaw and pitch is so that I can convert that angle difference into pixels and correctly display it on my overlay using SFML. I'll talk about the height adjustment in a second of what it does and how it works, but let's continue. I check if the angle is under 25 degrees so that I avoid wrong uh, line projections on the enemy as the, as I said, the longer the angle, the program seems to have trouble displaying where the enemy is correctly. Here I convert, like I said, the distance, that displacement in pixels, that angle displacement in pixels using what I showed you over here. And now I draw the two lines. Now let's actually talk about the tracers because the second line is a little bit more interesting. It took a little bit more finessing of correctly doing it. So as you can see, the line starts at the, at the center of the window, your crosshair, and then from there, on the x-axis, it gets displaced by the amount of pixels between you and your enemy. And the same for the y-axis, where your line gets displaced from the center y coordinate with the amount of pixels to go up or down uh, towards the enemy's head. Yeah, this is it in action. So now let's talk about how the vertical line that cuts through the player actually works. Because as I said, it took a little bit more finessing to do. I used this to calculate how many pixels should that line B. Now, in order to actually calculate this, I had to do a little bit of study, I guess. I collected the data of how many pixels was an enemy on this resolution, of course, on 1360, at different distances. I made a graph and then I used recursion on Excel to get the formula which can be done by going here, the trend line, you go more options and it's not linear, it's power. Because, and the reason why it's power is because it aligns the best with the graph. And you put the display equation on, on chart. The way that I got this table, well, I simply removed all the bots on the map, except for one, and then I display and then I displayed on the console, on this program, uh, the direct distance between me and the player so that I can get an idea how exactly how far I am from the player. And then I used GIMP to get the distance, uh, to, to get the height of that player in pixels. This got me the formula, which is 40,624 times x, which is in this case the distance between you and the player, to the power of minus 1.014, which will give you the pixel value of the player's height, which is 75 units in the game. I believe so, right? Yeah, I think so. And then I just draw that line by first starting as the head of the player and then allowing this formula to, ex uh, to define of how extended the line should be on the actual player. Well, other than that, there isn't any, uh, any much more explaining needed to be done. And this is really it. It's really simple and it works. So let's, I'm also going to go into 1080p over here, full screen windowed. And I will change the resolution. And as you can see, it's directly on the player. Of course, I'll put this on the GitHub. I will uh, clean it up a little bit. And I hope you have a great day. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. See ya.